you you see players like if you pick up just like a bunch of star players but they don't really work well with each other like sure they're all really good individually but overwatch is like a super big team game so like if they can't work together as a team like they're not gonna do that great what's up guys welcome to another episode of the play hustle today we have zachary he's a, a flex dps player for the dell's fuel he was on renegades and also more known you know later on for fusion university went on a win streak did insane how are you doing man uh i'm doing pretty well thanks for asking nice so have you uh, have you ever thought about how it was to uh, get into your first sponsored team i'm, I'm just jumping right into it here with uh, yeah. renegades like you um, um you don't have any background on uh, liquipedia or anything how did you get into renegades okay so yeah I, before i was on renegades like a lot of the tournaments and stuff that i did were like really small stuff like ag weeklies and uh, there was like cow weeklies so, like it was competitive overwatch weeklies and I played on teams with like, I don't think I played with anybody that's like really in owl or contenders at the moment. So a lot of just like random people just putting teams together to have fun. Mm. So I just scrimmed with like, you know, just random, like at the time it was T3 teams. And then I got like really high rated on ladder. And one of the players that I played with happened to have like been a former player on Renegades before they became Renegades and recommended me to their manager for like a tryout because they knew they needed a DPS player. Mm. Mm. Was it like, uh, how to say, how did, how did you interpret it? Because you, you were kind of young then, you were in high school still. And Yeah, I think yeah. at the time I was playing the T3 tournaments, I was 15. And then when I got my tryout for Renegades, I was 16. So it was like, I didn't, I never really like thought of like going pro. I watched like pro esports and other games before Overwatch, like CS and League. But I never really thought about like going pro or like having an opportunity to go pro. I, I kind of wanted to do like a more streaming type thing, but then like I got like super high rated. So a bunch of people were just asking me to try out and stuff for teams. So mm. I kind of just like, you know, I said, why not just take the shot and go for it? Yeah. Did, uh, did you have any uh, idol for, for streaming like Shroud, uh, Stewie 2K or like st stuff like um, that? I liked watching Sneaky a lot. Mm. Sneaky and Summit. Those are like my two favorite streamers because I used to watch Summit all the time when he played like Daisy, Warzy and CS. And then I watched Sneaky play League a lot because I was just into those games at the time. And they're just like my favorite streamers to watch consistently. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with school and, and Renegades at the same time? Because that probably was a bit difficult. Yeah. Uh, like homework, that... scrims, uh, living mm -hmm. in their house, etc. So with Renegades, it was a weird start because like the whole schoolwork thing started when I was in sophomore of, so my sophomore year of high school. And I was like an honor student. So I was taking like all honors and AP classes. And I think I started playing with Renegades in the second half of the year, so second semester. And I would like I'd do as much homework as I could during school. And then I would come home, do homework, scrim. And then in like, in like an hour break between scrims, I'd do more homework. And then we'd finish our scrims. I'd finish my homework and I'd go to bed and I'd sleep for like five hours. <laughs> You're, you, it was you were, kind of awful. Yeah. You were basically living the life of, um, of a startup company ceo or something like you know yeah, bas much. basically two jobs and and yeah like extra stuff but um after i finished the sophomore year of high school i transferred to online classes because like a lot of my teams were traveling like fusion uni and sun with face clap we traveled to, like taiwan poland la so i wasn't able to just stay at home in florida and do schoolwork so i had to transfer into online mm. to actually be able to like do my classwork while i'm traveling and stuff mm. was it a big difference or pretty much the same yeah on, online school is pretty different like when you go to like you pretty much just lose all of your social interactions when you go into online school mm. unless like you have like collaboration projects or you go to like live lessons you, there's really no um social interaction so i did never there's like no hanging out with friends at school or anything anymore it was just like you know, I did the online classes to do my homework and that was it mm -hmm. and make sure I graduate. Yeah. So just speaking of like losing that social interaction and stuff, did that affect you when you went into Fusion U University? Because it was a huge year for you. But before that, did you have any, uh, how to say, not issues with the roster, but like uh, how was your confidence in the roster? Maybe how like how you would fit in, what type of role you would have? Going into Fusion Uni? Yeah, yeah. Like before that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was like really concerned at the time like because basically what happened is 
2017 contenders season zero and season one had ended and then renegades disbanded so nobody really knew what was going on with like the next season of contenders because i couldn't play owl i was um i was 16 17 so i wasn't old enough to play in overwatch league season one so mm. i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know like what contenders was going to be like are we going to get academy teams from owl is it just going to be like the same orgs again or is it going to be unsigned so i had like no clue what was really going on but um i after i joined with mangachu again for this team called sun with face clap and we went to taiwan and we played like a troll little fun tournament and around then i was deciding whether or not i was going to swap into like playing off tank or staying on dps so i was kind of concerned like i didn't know what i was doing but then I had tryouts for um, Boston and Fusion Uni. So Boston Academy and Fusion Uni. And I was playing DPS again. And I felt really confident playing. But the real surprise was that I like at that time, I was still like mostly flex. So I was playing like more projectile characters, like Genji included. And then I, I kind of like got onto Fusion Uni. And then it was like, oh, hey, who are you here? It's like, OK, it's so actually just playing Tracer now. And I'm playing Tracer Sombra. So I just like random role swapped like out of nowhere mm. and I had to pick up like Tracer and Sombra and pretty much just like super hard one trick those characters until I was confident of them. Yeah. Did you did you feel like it was uh, easy to to work with with who are you because who are you was also um, you know in Lunatic Eye he was uh, he had you know like uh, the bench yeah, situation etc. There were rumors of like you know attitude issues and stuff but mm. I, like there were never there was, I never really had any issues playing with who are you and there's no like real attitude issue that ever happened on our team. Mm. Like, obviously, at the beginning, when you start a team, like, it doesn't always go perfect. Like, we didn't really have synergy because it was Alarm and Who Are You's first time playing with Western players and non-Korean speakers. So, like, we took our time and, like, built up some synergy and stuff before, like, we actually started getting into really in-depth strategy. Mm. Yeah. And after, like, a few weeks or, like, so of practice, like, everybody just started to, like, hanging out and playing with each other. So, synergy built up really well. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like it was pretty how to say smooth afterwards especially hanging out with each other just that bonding itself yeah. helps a lot we had like the hometown heroes event i don't know if you remember that in like 2018 we had a hometown heroes event where like uh fusion was pretty much picking up somebody from the local Philly oh, yeah. area to like be on the team and that like as much of like a random and sporadic event that it was for us it was actually pretty good for like building team synergy because all the guys pretty much just hung out with each other for like two days straight and just, you know, relaxed and played and mm. talked. So everybody started to like, like each other and we just became friends. Yeah, dude, that's, that's great to hear. That's great to hear because not every team really did that. I would say not many teams at all even attempted yeah. that. I think like team synergy is just too important. So mm. like you, you see players like, if you pick up just like a bunch of star players, but they don't really work well with each other, like sure, they're all really good individually, but Overwatch is like a super big team game. So like if they can't work together as a team, like they're not going to do that great. Yeah. So I wanted, I wanted to talk about after Fusion University when you went into the World Cup. So at the end of uh, the year, you had a World Cup and a big shift in public opinion due to uh, one of like your famous, how to say infamous or famous, however you want to say it, like Widow moments. Yeah, and uh, you lost a game. And you know, it happens to everyone. It as mm -hmm. players, you, like you don't really think of it that much because you have to move on. You you can't yeah. you can't stay on it. But how did you deal with the insane backlash? Because you got a lot of hate compared to what other people did, and you didn't really how to say back down. You didn't really. Yeah, I I yeah. like okay. I just really didn't care what like other people's opinions were on it. Then you're like, you know, we made mistakes, we fucked up, I didn't play well, other people didn't play well, it was just a bad showing all around. Mm. So, like, I mean, I, it, it sucks, we lost, but whatever. I mean, a lot of people just started not liking me because, you know, we lost, and I didn't care when people were, like, flaming me or other players and blaming the entire loss on one player or something, because I think it's just stupid to go in and blame an entire loss on, like, say, just me or just Muma or just blaming an entire, like, fault as a team or strategy wise based off of just like one single player when there's a lot of factors that go on in the game mm. so like i think a lot of people were just like oh well he's toxic and then they just didn't like me so oh yeah i don't i don't really care yeah it's not a big deal to me no yeah i, I wanted to ask uh, as well but i, I guess you kind of answered uh, since it was a new experience would you say that it kind of helped you to grow as a player or was it more like skills that you already had 
and you didn't really learn much, but you improved them. How did you from, gain from it? Like World Cup as a whole? No, the the situation with like the the backlash of the World Cup because you you see like players in uh, Overwatch League even. I'm not I'm not gonna point any fingers, but the hate yeah, on Reddit can. Get- yeah, like mm-hmm. hate on Reddit pushes people down, etc. Yeah, it kind of sucks because like Reddit's just this thing where like you know if somebody makes a mistake or like somebody plays bad like, because of, like one play they'll just start instantly calling a player garbage or like trash or that they shouldn't be in the game or something like that. Mm. And like a lot of people don't know how to deal with it and they shut down. It's like you just have to relax and like you know have have faith in yourself and yourself and in your team to like back you up and to just keep making plays because like. Nine times out of ten, somebody who's roasting you on social media or like just a third party blog website or something like that is just they don't know what's actually going on in the game or what it takes to like be at that level. Mm. And by the time that you're already playing in those types of matches and like playing at that high of a level, you've already like accomplished that. So you just have to like trust in yourself, you know? Yeah. So just like you just kind of have to block it out and ignore it. And it's not really a big deal. Mm. So like, if it takes just taking a break from social media so you don't see it or just like i don't know like completely ignoring reddit i, I don't i've never really been a big fan of like using reddit at all so I, the reddit threads and stuff never really bothered me yeah but i know a lot of players like to browse reddit frequently and see like what's on compo w i i just never go so mm. like taking a break from social media or like checking websites where you know it's infamous for flaming players just don't look at it trust yourself and like relax yeah dude take a break from social media it's it's not a big deal if somebody flames you because if you pop off the next game they're all magically going to be supporting you that's fine yeah dude you you have the key like you have the key i don't i don't know the a better word for it but you have the key to like constant progress or constant development because yeah at, the, at this point like you're the only competition to yourself if that mm-hmm. makes sense it's like you're competing against really good players but like you're also one of the best players so you just have to like you know relax and focus on improving and just block out. Just don't be worried about making mistakes because of backlash that's going to happen on social media. Just always just try and improve and you know mm. better yourself and your team, and then you'll be fine. What would you say was the number one thing that you wish you knew before going into uh, 2019 or Watch League, uh, yeah, season? Um, hmm. I think this was a rough one. Like. If I if there was something that I knew going into Overwatch League 2019 season, it would probably be just like knowing what type of like style I would have had to play going into it. Because like going into the 2019 season, like before that, I was playing like super heavy like DPS style and aggressive DPS style, and then going into 2019, like with the swap to playing like goats on every point of every map. I wasn't really playing like the Zarya in the in the comp. I was playing Brig, so like I needed to know that like, hey, I just need to like relax and chill with the team, keep people alive, and then just bash when people need me to bash. That's it, and not try and make plays. I just if I needed to just be like relaxed and chilled and just focus on like ability management, then I think I would have been like a lot happier with my performance in 2019. Mm. Yeah. So you you played in the homestand first one and the second one as well. How do you feel about the future ones? Like, does it feel just as intense as the first, second, etc., or is it more like, you know, being at home now, or, or you know, it, it's more like normal for you? Um, I wouldn't say it's really gotten too normal yet, because like we haven't gotten to play that many homestands yet. We only played like our first one. We played one in LA, but it was like really small, and we only played one match. And um, the one that was here was like the only uh second one so we haven't really had a big like travel event right we haven't gone like overseas or cross country we haven't really done much because like when we were in la for the la homestand like we had already been in la for the entire year so we just moved like 20 minutes away that was it so i think it's still going to be pretty big and exciting and crazy to see like when we actually go like cross country because our asia matches are like rescheduled and stuff right now because the coronavirus which is really unfortunate but I was, I'm really looking forward to like actually being able to play like in Asia or in Europe and seeing like what the crowds are going to be like. And if we get booed, that'd be cool because like we get booed and then like, you know, if we play really well, we get to like silence the people that just didn't want to see us play well and beat the home crowd. Mm. And then when we're home, it's like at Dallas, it always feels like it's super hyped and super 
like there's a lot of energy in the arena so i want to be able to see like what it's like going from arena to arena and seeing like who has the most intense fans mm. do you have any special city you want to go to um i wanted to go to seoul but that one just got rescheduled oh yeah we were, we were supposed to go like at the start of next week but it got rescheduled but other than seoul i want to go to paris which as of right now we're still going to paris which is good glad mm. and yeah I, I like mostly wanted to go to seoul and paris those are the, like the two number ones that i wanted to go to mm. so just speaking of like crowds in general seeing what every arena is like etc do you what would you feel like if you saw yourself go out on a stage or you have golden boy hyping you up or whatever you know what would you feel when you see yourself like if you go outside of your perspective so like if i was in the crowd looking up yeah what vibe vibe do you get like is it a six star player is it a calm and collective player you know stuff like that for like if they were looking at me yeah maybe just like you know the calm and collected player that like when they when they're on like a comfort pick like somber or something like that that they can control the game mm. okay nice yeah. like when you're in the crowd for events like the overwatch events sometimes it's just like super sick yeah because i was there for um the 2018 grand finals the philly versus um london one in new york and it was just super sick seeing like all of london roll out and all of um philly roll out and they were on the stage together and they like staring at each other intensely it was really cool i yeah. like it's it's a cool feeling yeah so now now that you are in the second year with uh, fuel what do you feel like your role is within the team? Because you have settled in, you have had time to learn how everyone thinks, you know, speaks, works, etc. What they like, don't like, and how do you, how do you, like, I, I guess, land in in the fuel family? Yeah, like right now, I'm working a lot on like just picking up, not niche DPS heroes, but like, because right now, like the meta has just been like May McCree mm. for Overwatch right now. So you've seen a lot of people playing May McCree. It's mm. like, you know, I'm practicing May and then I'm working on practicing and picking up characters and trying to like be able to adapt fast to the when hero pools come and we don't know what's going to happen. Just I'm working on like a bunch of characters to be able to pick up and play whatever we need, whenever we need, because we just don't know what's going to happen until the week is happening. Mm. So just being able to be all around and like flexible to adapt to any situation that's thrown at us. Mm. I'm just making sure I can be prepared for anything pretty much. Yeah. Since, since you have to be prepared for pretty much everything, that requires probably a, a lot of practice, but also smart practice, yeah. because you can't just waste time on one here and then not be ready yeah, for that so, one. Like, we're looking at um, the pick rate of characters that are going on, like, in the Owl. The Owl matches the week before, because, like, the hero bands are pretty weird. They work, like, they take the, um, the characters from each role with over 10% pick rate, from the last week and then they randomly ban the characters from that pool right so it's one dp or two dps one tank and one support so like if i see that these characters have a chance to be banned i'll be thinking about like what'll be good if they're banned and what to practice maybe not to put too much practice on this character because they have a high odd to get banned so it's like yeah. it's really rough like actually trying to figure out what you need to try and practice yeah i mean that's why you have coaches right yeah yeah so how how do you keep up with the practice because let's say that there's someone listening here who has no idea you know what what happens maybe they know yeah. about scrims ranked etc what do you do to what's what's your practice regime basically how much ranked is it how much scrims votes etc okay so scrims depending on the day it's usually either two scrim blocks which are two hours each so four hours or three scrim blocks so six hours of scrims with your team and then when you're outside playing ranked, usually if you're playing a two scrim block day, you play more. But if you're playing three, like, say you've already put six hours into scrims with your team, so that's six hours of gameplay. And then right after that, usually maybe you take a break, you eat, and then you go in and you play more ranked for maybe like three or four hours. You just practice the characters that you want to practice or you want to improve on. Mm, yeah. How do you feel about personal branding, by the way? Because you, you have quite the name, you're, you're rooted into the fuel branding. Yeah. How, how important is it to you? And what are you doing to uh, strengthen your personal branding? I think personal branding is actually a super important thing in esports that a lot of like newer players don't really think about. Like I know a lot of people have been critiquing like contenders and T3 because a lot of the teams don't really like do anything to promote their players and the players don't really do anything to promote themselves. But like 
player branding is a really important thing because like if you watch regular sports or like you know athletic sports like say i don't know like basketball and you think of like individual players you don't just think of teams like you think of lebron or i don't know like back in the day like Shaq. like you think of like those big shot like huge people that brand themselves and have their own like huge stardom and stuff like that and a lot of players just don't really think about it but i think it's like a really important thing that you have to put a lot of effort in, effort into to actually maintain like you know a good brand mm. and i think like one thing that a lot of people could do is just like be active on social media like if you have twitter or instagram or facebook or something post something like once a day interact with your followers and your fans and like you know just chat so just like post something and then ignore everybody like respond to your comments talk to people and then streaming regularly is another like big thing that a lot of people should do like if you're playing ranked and you're obviously if you're practicing something like that you want to keep secret you don't need to stream it but like odds are if you're playing ranked you could be streaming and then you could be interacting with your fan base and you know just getting people to enjoy like watching you or watching your team and making them like the game more mm. where do you see yourself in six months from now are you gonna mm. win the the watch league i mean everyone wants to win but where yeah do you i see mean yourself? everybody yeah. wants to win. uh i mean i'm not too sure because i think six months from now we're still gonna be like gonna be toward the end of the season i think mm. So, I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, we're going into playoffs and, you know, being able to make a run into the finals or into the later half of playoffs. And actually, like, I want to kind of prove people wrong that we're not going to be bad because a lot of people are, like, rating us really low. And I want to be able to, like, you know, turn around and play the season and have it go well and, you know, have a strong showing. That's what I want to do, mm. mostly. Yeah. And one last question here. What's the number one thing you would tell a younger Zach if you would want to set him up for the most success possible and he would start, you know, aiming for, uh, for the pro career today? So like you meet that 15 year old Zach, what would it be? Um, I would probably tell like 15 or 16 year old me to just always be relaxed when he's playing and just think things through and then just put in as much effort as I possibly can. And then I'll be the best that I can be. That that's all it did. What's your social media? Um, so my Twitter is at Zach Lombardo. So Z A C K L O M B A R D O. And then my Instagram is the same thing, but it has an underscore at the end. And then my Twitch is Zachary, but with four E's. Cool. Thanks, my man. And I hope you have yeah. a great day. Good luck in matches and yeah, the whole season. Thank you.